By the way, uh, you'll see many veterans uh, throughout this complex. Greet them. Thank them for their service. And uh, I tried to find the head of the uh, of their group just to have them come say hello and us to tell them how much we appreciate their service. But that didn't happen. And we're not going to linger and take up much time. I just uh, I want Brother Jackson to come. I feel like he has... Something to say. If he just opens his mouth and says, praise the Lord, he said something. Because that's the kind of man he is. Uh, There's a a few men uh, among us, uh, not including myself, that can say more in five or six minutes than I can say in a whole sermon. And so we are delighted to have Brother Tommy Jackson here. He's uh, he's been a dear friend, and uh, we just... uh, enjoying this part of the journey together and uh, we you know if you young men that we've invited here don't hurry up and get it done we're going to come out of retirement and get her done (laughs) Tommy Jackson we love you and appreciate you so much and we want you to come take your liberty in this place today thank you Well, praise the Lord again, everybody. Amen. It is a delight to be at Heritage again. We have not missed many of them in the last number of years. And uh, I want to say thank you to the bishop and to Brother Burgess for sponsoring this. And uh, it's a tremendous endeavor. And I tell you what, the dividends that it pays in our young people is priceless Amen. Our children go home, amen, in better shape, fired up, and we thank God for what uh, goes on here. To me, it is uh, is the highlight of our year. It's the greatest youth meeting that I know of anywhere. It's a safe place. Amen. Can you say amen to that? It's a very safe place, and um, the focus... I think is absolutely perfect. Amen. There's no focus on talent. Even all the focus is on preaching and praying, consecration. Amen. So we appreciate that so very, very much. Amen. Now, I had something I was going to talk about a little bit today, and I won't be very long. But I just received a special request about 10 minutes ago. Brother Jones asked me just to preach or teach the preacher's wives. (laughs) Now, there may be a problem in that area. I'm not sure. But... I'm not real smart, but I am wise. I won't touch that. I'm not nearly smart enough to touch that. Amen. I thought when I got this old, I'd know more than what I know. But, you know, that's just the way it goes. And uh, last year I spoke at at, uh, Bishop's Breakfast, and thank you for the invitation and the opportunity and I talked about the uh, dangers of burnout and which we all have to deal with I think in fact I think it's uh, more now than it ever has been even Brother Johns and I were talking late yesterday evening and we just I thought when you're retired you just got to lay back and take it easy and relax And I feel like a dog going in circles chasing my tail. (laughs) Amen. Just no slowdown, nowhere to stop. Amen. But I guess that's good. But uh, it is a a real uh, challenge today. I really appreciate uh, that tremendous message last night. Amen. What a challenge. It really makes me wish I was a young man again. What a tremendous message we heard. I, after listening to Brother Garrett last night, I'm standing here wondering what I'm doing, even even standing here. 
uh, tremendous, tremendous preaching. Amen. But uh, we have, I think, a great opportunity. The challenge is great, but the opportunity is tremendous, even for apostolic revival. And if we don't do it, it's not going to be done. Amen. Nobody else is going to carry this glorious message of truth that we believe with all of our hearts. Amen. Now, I'm not projecting myself as an authority on any subject here today, but um, after 58 years of preaching, I've made some observations down through the years that maybe I can share a few things with you that maybe would be helpful. I look at the quality of men that sit here today, and uh, it's very impressive. Amen. Men of, of great knowledge and great ability, and amen. And what encourages me is to see the number and the quality of young men that's being raised up in our fellowship, in our midst. It really gives you a good feeling about the future, amen, of, of our wonderful apostolic message, amen. But uh, after 58 years of preaching, even I have survived uh, a lot of different facets of Pentecost, amen. Some of you won't uh, maybe uh, know anything about, but everything from free Pentecost Amen, to highly organized Pentecost and everything in between. Amen. Now, I don't know in this part of the world, but in southeast Texas and Louisiana and Mississippi, even there was a time when even it was just called free Pentecost. And uh, one thing they could never accuse them of is being organized. Amen. It was uh, pretty, pretty footloose and fancy free. You know, sometimes we say this, you know, we'd like to have old time Pentecost again. But when you really look at some of that, even it wasn't that attractive. And uh, used to, we had, uh, we had monthly fellowship meetings. And then they had the tri-state fellowship meetings. And they could last till midnight. Everybody preached. It didn't matter if you was just starting. If you was a preacher, they let you preach. And this is in the free Pentecost era of time. And one man might get up and preach something, and the next man may get up and contradict everything he said. And, and a young preacher get up and say something foolish, and they would skin him alive. Even I know. And they didn't, they didn't apologize. But I tell you what, it gave us a tough hide. Amen. It prepared us for later years of pastoring. Amen. But through all of these experiences, I've always tried to hold on to the good and discard the bad and uh, try to create a, amen, a good balance in my life. And that's what I'd like to talk about just for a few minutes here this morning. Even every man here has their own ministry. Even they have their own type of delivery. Even their own even knowledge. But really it doesn't matter today whether you're a pastor, an evangelist, a teacher, or a missionary. Even every man needs balance in his ministry. Amen. And... Uh, I have seen a lot of young men that focuses maybe on what they think that they are better at. And we are living in a day when there is so much specialized ministries. And uh, I think it's detrimental to the completeness amen, of a young man's ministry or life. Uh, there is so much to do in all the areas of the kingdom of God. I think balance is a very valuable, valuable asset. In fact, I think it is even imperative that we have 
balance in our life. Now, I'm going to say this today because I really believe it's true. Just because that we are conservative doesn't necessarily mean that we're balanced. Amen. I see a lot of men that are very conservative in their message, but they are very limited and even they are even they have no real balance in their life. And I think it's important that we have balance. Even balance, amen, is something that's evenly distributed for maximum efficiency. Anything out of balance creates an unnecessary or damaging effects. Now, this may seem a little even elementary, but I was headed into Houston the other day on the freeway, and I passed a car. It was a nice car, beautiful paint job, even fairly new. And as I went by, my attention was caught. Even that left front tire, I thought it was going to bounce off of the rim. Amen. It was out of balance. Amen. I, I thought the people driving and holding that steering wheel, they had to be feeling the effects of that tire out of balance. But you know, you can live with something long enough that you accept it as normal. You just think that's the way it ought to be. Amen. When a 20 minute stop in a good tire shop, even when have given them a smooth ride. Amen. And I think sometimes we just adjust ourselves and we stop our, our growth and we fail to encompass everything that God really needs out of us, amen, to create a real balanced ministry or a balanced life. Amen. All these ladies have experienced from time to time a washing machine with an unbalanced load. Amen. It'll about dance off of the floor. I thought even a, even a daredevil tightrope tight rope walker, he's got a balancing pole, amen, to keep him from losing his balance. And I think it's so imperative, amen, that we have balance in our life. In the book of Judges, it tells us of 70 kings, amen, whose thumbs and their big toes was taken off. Amen. When you understand the importance, amen, of that big toe to give you balance, and so much more for a man that's going into battle, amen, that's got to fight and pivot, amen, and defend himself. And then without his thumbs, he cannot weld a sword. He cannot hold a bow. Amen. The devil would like nothing more than to handicap Amen. The ministry and handicap a preacher. Amen. To where you're one dimensional. Amen. You focus just on your strong point or what you like or enjoy. Amen. But to go to battle and do the work of God, uh, it's so important that we have balance. Amen. That we can have that ability that we need. Let me tell you today, if a church is unbalanced, it's because they have unbalanced leadership. And you may not have seen a lot of that, but through all the years of preaching and ministering and pastoring, even I've experienced it many, many times, even across the country. Amen. And when you find churches that are one-dimensional, amen, they limit even themselves in their growth, they limit themselves in their spiritual maturity. Amen. Let me tell you, amen, God gave the fivefold ministry because one man cannot perfect the church. And God knew that through the fivefold ministry, amen, that the church would be supplied, amen, with the adequate balance that we need, amen, to be able to present this gospel, amen, to a world that is in confusion and they have no other opportunity to know God. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. I'm not implying that anybody here today doesn't possess that balance. Amen. But probably I appeal more to the younger preachers today 
Amen. In your pursuit, in your development. Amen. Ask God, help you to be well-rounded. Amen. Through the years, we have had quite a number of preachers come out of our church in Highlands. And, uh, and we have always endeavored in helping them prepare for whatever their ministry was, whether it was evangelizing or pastoring or starting a church, amen, that they would build that type of balance in their life to be equipped to carry even the gospel wherever God would send them. I have seen churches through the years, and many of you have too, that are very strong on doctrine. Amen. They preach strong doctrine. And I'm not telling you something that I am not, uh, that I'm making up. And then I've seen them make fun, amen, of outreach and soul winning and teaching Bible studies. That's out of balance. Don't, fors- don't forsake the doctrine, but we got a lost and dying world to reach. Amen. He came to seek and to save, and I've listened to them. I know one time we had a, a, a drive, and in six weeks we had amen, over 500 visitors in six weeks. Amen. Almost it was 100 visitors every Sunday. Amen. And a friend of mine was relating that to a group of preachers, and they just thought that was the funniest thing in the world. I said, let them laugh. Amen. I'm having the time of my life. Amen. Preaching to all those sinners and seeing all of them get the Holy Ghost. Amen. What good is it to preach the doctrine, amen, if we don't practice the doctrine? Amen. Praise God. I've seen churches, and I'm just going to hit a few things, but even that preach very strong dress codes, and we believe that, and it's evidenced by even what's here today. Even that I've seen those same preachers and churches even go to ball games and rodeos. Well, <laughs> I'm talking about balance. Amen. Praise God. I know churches that are strong on shouting and worship, and they have very little knowledge of the Word. Their people can't quote five oneness scriptures. They have no revelation of the Godhead. Amen. It's more than just singing and dancing. Amen. There's more than just worship. Praise God. Amen. I have been amazed in traveling sometimes and seeing amen, what little revelation amen, some people have, but yet they're caught up amen, in enjoying the emotional part of Pentecost. Amen. I see and I have amen, through the years been places where they're very heavy on the operation of spiritual gifts. And we believe in spiritual gifts. And we believe they ought to operate in the church. Amen. But then they, they don't have a clue about New Testament church government. Well, amen. I, I preached at home last Sunday night. And as I was walking up to the platform, one of the men stopped me and said, Well, do you have a... Any words of wisdom for us tonight? And I said, probably not. I said, I prayed before I came in here that the Lord would help me to say something that makes sense. Amen. That's what I prayed this morning. Amen. I don't claim to have any wisdom. I do have enough wisdom not to fulfill your request, but... I have been to places where they feel like if they don't have tongues and interpretation in the service, that the service is not complete. Let me just say today, we believe in the operation of the gifts, but every preaching message doesn't have to be validated. God designed preaching 
to fit the need. Now, there are times, and it's important, amen, that God does reinforce, amen, with the operation of the Spirit. But we don't need to feel like that every preaching that we do has got to be validated. Amen. If it's been prayed over and it's anointed, amen, God is going to let the Word do the work that it needs to do. Preaching is in itself a gift. It is the most important gift, amen, for the church, amen. And I thank God that preaching still works, amen. It still does the job. And uh, I know churches, and I'm not just picking this out of my head, I know churches that it is predetermined, has been for years, that there will be no preaching on Sunday night. Amen. It's going to be a shout down regardless. Hey, what about that sinner that walks in? We believe in shouting. We, we love a shout down. Every once in a while you need a little relief anyway. Praise God. But to predetermine that when the music starts, yeah, but we're going to do the huckabuck for the next two hours. Yeah, man, and we're not going to let the sinner know how to be saved. And there's not going to be no conviction, heaven, that brings them to the altar. Amen. You can't, you can't predetermine what the will of God is six months in advance for a service. That's not balance. Worship, yes. Amen. But you can't say, hey, every service, every Sunday night, amen, it's going to be a shouting service. That just might not be the will of God. For that service. Amen. And when a preacher is balanced and he's in tune, amen, he's going to move with whatever direction that God wants him to move in. Amen. And I see churches that when the music starts, it's on. Amen. Let me just say today, and I'm not going to be much longer, but whatever we incorporate into our church, if it doesn't have a biblical principle or a biblical amen, precedent over time, it's subject to fail. Praise God. And living through all the different facets, amen. If I had time, I could tell you some interesting stories, amen, that we have seen through the years, and many of you have seen them also. But I thank God again today for the fivefold ministry because there have been times that I could not fulfill the need that was in my assembly. Even God had a ministry, even that would fit that need and make our church more well rounded and what it ought to be. I'm going to say this again one preacher, I don't care how talented, how anointed, how knowledgeable you are. You cannot perfect your church by yourself. Amen. Everybody said amen. Amen. In Hosea, God looked at Ephraim and said, Ephraim, he is a cake not turned. Amen. He's half-baked. He's beautiful on one side, but he's soggy and raw. On the other side. Amen. That's unbalanced. If you just look at the one aspect, amen, it's very impressive. It looks good. But when you look at the whole thing, let me tell you, an Ephraim ministry comes to a disappointing end. You don't fulfill potential. You don't live up to what the expectation, amen, that God has. It is unproductive. Amen. So, I pray God help us, amen. If I could go back and be a young man, amen, would I do some things differently? Most definitely. I'd be foolish to say that everything I've always done was perfect and right, amen. But I thank God for the caliber of men, amen, that we have in our circle of fellowship, amen. I mean, we have some of the most intelligent, some of the greatest, and at the same time, some of the most anointed young men, Amen, that we've ever had in the apostolic ministry. And I thank God for it.
thank God for these elders. I thank God for these young men, even that's carrying this message and carrying this flag. Thank you again, Elder, today for Amen. I hope we leave a little word today that be of help to somebody. Amen. But strive to have a well-rounded ministry. Amen. Strive to have balance in your life, and it will produce balance in your church. Amen. Your preaching, your worship, amen, your doctrine, amen, your, your church government, amen. We do that. Amen. We'll fulfill the commission that God gave us to fulfill. Amen. Lift your hands and let's thank him today. Amen. And I'm done. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let's thank him for what we just heard. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Pastor Burgess, would you make your way to the podium, please? We are grateful for what we heard. I wish I would have heard this one before I was 30 years old. As I've been thumping down the highway all these years, and uh, sometimes all four wheels thumping, you can imagine that. Uh, now that I'm on skids, it don't thump quite as bad as it did. But uh, we appreciate all of you. And we want you to join us in prayer about next year's conference because we're going to need to see what can happen. And uh, God can lead us. I like this hotel so well, but uh, we're going to need a place. God bless you. Pastor Burgess, come and close with your remarks. And uh... Thank you, Bishop. And uh, I was listening to Elder Jackson, and uh, I... I I started to turn to my wife and say this, but then I said, I know I'm not going to be talking while he's talking. But I thought it's very evident uh, that Elder Jackson has not just been a preacher. He's been a church planter. He's been a home missionary and built churches. He has the heartbeat of the church. And yet when I got to know him, he was already really an elder among his fellowship. And his strength um, was so... Uh, direction setting and we we are thankful for men like that and I I sat here and thought about this full room and I I looked around and and so many of you um, we go back a few years ago and we had a lot of kids coming but um, it was it seems like our crowd of ministry has grown and uh, this is something Bishop and I've talked about in recent years that I am thankful that God is, is drawing us together. There is a spirit that rises up against that and tries to divide us and make us sectarian, make us uh, divide over the smallest of things sometimes. And uh, even in politics, it seems that way. The conservatives can't stay together and the liberals accept everything. Well, we're not going to accept everything. But I do believe there are, there are men, maybe even in your area, that are feeling the need to go back to the old paths. And we've got to be strong enough to do like Brother Morton says, uh, to draw a circle big enough to bring some of them in. And I know it will take the discernment of the Holy Ghost. And I know you may be uh, kind of sitting there a little skeptical wondering what I'm saying and uh, wondering where I'm going, well, you don't have to worry about where we're going. We're on the same path we've always been on, and we're going to stay there. But I'm thankful to see some men and some young men looking this way. And uh, I, I, want, I want my heartbeat is to see this room not just this full, but if the Lord tarries, every conservative meeting we have going, let it feel even greater. Let us encourage one another and let us, let us have revival till Jesus comes. And I am so thankful for all of you that are here, you pastors. Thank you for trusting us with your young people. And uh, it's, it's, uh, your young people are really what makes this conference such a great one because they, they pull the messages out of these preachers and they bring the anointing down. They 
really do touch the hem of his garment and the virtue flows out. And uh, it didn't take us long to start having church last night. And uh, we appreciate you being here. You make heritage. And uh, many of you uh, have been introduced to this conference by your friends. And uh, you found somebody out there of like-mindedness, like precious faith, and brought us all together. And we want to stick together and have revival till Jesus comes. Amen. Lord bless you. I want to turn this back to Bishop now. I really didn't intend to come back, but I was, at, at this age you forget a couple of things. And uh, one of them is I want to thank Matthew and Samantha Renvik for coming and getting all of this equipment and recording device together. They were here very early this morning. I'm appreciative of Brother Renvik. He is a hardworking man. I called him early yesterday morning uh, about the situation here. And I said, where in the world are you? He's way up in the mountains finishing the project so he could get back down here. I think we, he deserves a big hand for what he has done to help us here. Man. And then the other is this uh, hotel has accommodated us here, as I told you. We uh, are not going through a buffet. We got to sit down. They served us. And uh, I don't recall whether we included a gratuity that's sufficient. And so if you don't mind, just put a little green out there and lay it on that table uh, for our good servers today, if you would. God bless you. Let's go to church. Get Got to get there and get a seat. All right. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.